Начинаем атаку. Внимание. Одна минута до цели. Направление. 2-1-0. Высота. 0-1. Hey Wargamers, it's Gregor, and this is Isle 2 Sturmovik 1946. This is a game I have a lot of history with. When I was in middle school, I saw a copy of this game intermixed with a whole bunch of computer games at a school book fair. So while everyone else there picked up copies of the newest Hunger Games or Harry Potter, whatever the hell it was, I looked at this and thought, Planes! Guns! Shit! Sounds dope! And out of sheer boredom, I'd grown up on flight sims in the past, so I figured this was something right up my alley. IL-2 1946 is the penultimate collection of a series of games that have been coming out for many years. Battle of Stalingrad is the most recent iteration of the franchise, but this game is really something else. It started with the original IL-2 Sturmovik base game that released in 2001. Obviously the base of the game was to serve as a simulator of the IL-2 Sturmovik attack aircraft that served during the Second World War. I lost the original copy of the game a long time ago, but I discovered that it was available through Steam for 10 bucks, so I figured, why the hell not? Although a bit dated, IL-2 1946 is one of those games that demonstrates how modding communities really make PC gaming better for everyone involved. In addition to the huge amount of content that's already available in this game, there's tons and tons of stuff out there that you can incorporate into the game, ranging from single-player scenarios to entirely new planes, skins, what have you. In essence, there's a near limitless amount of expansion packs out there to explore. And this is neat, because in the base game, there is very little in terms of the single-player portion of the game in regards to the Battle of Britain or the Italian campaign. I think there's more content that makes up for this, though. There's a great deal of content revolving around the conflict between Finland and the Soviet Union, a grossly underexplored part of World War II that would be great subject matter for any Eastern Front World War II games out there. Relax. There were also many efforts to include different perspectives of the war from the sides of Germany's other allied states like Romania, Hungary, and Slovakia. Most of the single-player content you'll find surrounds the Eastern Front, but there's a surprisingly well-developed portion of the game pertaining to the Pacific War. It's not just the USA and Japan going at it. Australia, New Zealand, and the Netherlands are in on it too. But yes, most of the content in this game pertains to the Eastern Front, probably because the game was developed in Russia. Just, just download mods. Why do, you, why do you people find something to complain about all the fucking time? There's a lot of interesting war machines out there you might not know about too. Machines that were overshadowed by the 109s and Spitfires. Some neat planes come in the form of machines like the Romanian IAR-80, and even the Polish early war P-11. Obviously as the war went on, planes like these eventually became outclassed, but it is neat that you can fly them if you so desire. Think of any random ass forum post from the Warfunder community page going, Gaijin please! and you'll probably find it in IL-2 1946, or at least a mod for it. At first, all of this stuff might seem daunting, but IL-2 is surprisingly easy for newcomers of this genre to pick it up. The realism settings can be adjusted to your taste, and there's a big ol' PDF that has everything you need to know about every plane on offer in the base game. It reminds me of an older time, when games were something that you invested a great deal of time into, and you had a bit more of a mutual relationship with the developers. You weren't expected to drop the game after a week, and the devs weren't expected to try and entice you to constantly fork over cash for GLC to justify your interest in the game. IL-2 has an extensive multiplayer community, but like I said, there's seriously so much single-player content here. If the single-player mission scenarios tire you out, there's also the dynamic campaign function. You pick an air force and a rank, and you basically play out a fictional life as a pilot as part of a squadron in XYZ operation during the war. Depending on how you perform in the subsequent missions, you can get promotions, demotions, or in some countries, you might get taken out and shot for fucking up really bad. There are also so-called static campaigns that are basically sets of scenarios. Some of them are even a bit story-driven and have some interesting fiction for you to read that accompanies the beginning of each sortie. And the game is called 1946 for a reason. All of the pioneers of the Jet Age are here, as well as some of the more kooky Luftwaffe secret projects. Some of the static campaigns in game are based around hypothetical settings in which the war drug on for longer, giving way for these interesting machines to be of usage. All in all, IL-2 1946 is, in my opinion, one of the best PC games ever made. Yeah, some physics in certain aspects for certain planes, 
are a bit wonky, but when you put into context how much content there is here, it's somewhat understandable, and if you're not satisfied, somehow, there's mods. And the lack of a Battle of Britain campaign in the base game can be easily solved with a few quick downloads. If you want to see more IL-2 1946 in the future, be sure to subscribe. I'm going to be having a lot of fun with this one. I'm Gregor. Thanks so much for watching. Одиннадцатый. Это диспетчер. Посадку разрешаю.